Hello, and welcome to the Creative Toolbox. My name is Shane Semler, and this is a show where I share with you tips and techniques for making the most of your creative software. This time, I'll be showing you the correct way to make a seamless tile and turn that tile into a color map, a bump map, a specularity map, and a normal map for use in Blender. Let's take a look. Last time we took a look at a quick and dirty way to create a seamless texture. This time we're going to take a look at the proper way to do it. Now I got this texture off of cgtextures.com. Uh, you can find it, it's uh, titled Cobble. So I think if you look for cobble or rocks or stone, you'll find this pretty easily. All right, first thing we want to do is we want to turn snap on because we're gonna bring some guides in to mark the center of, of the image. And when snap is on, uh, you'll automatically get a snap to center. And then we're going to duplicate the, uh, the layer four times. Then we'll move each of these layers um, so the outside corners are all in the middle. So what this does is it makes it so it is now tiled on all the outside edges. Now what we need to do is we need to get rid of these harsh lines in the center. There's a number of ways you could do this. You could you could try copying and pasting whole rocks to sort of fill in where where the uh, harsh line is, but I don't think that would work very well in this case. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to erase to reveal the rocks underneath. So to do this, um, I merge the uh, layers together on the top and so that way I have the tiled layer on the top and the original image underneath. So what I'll do is I'll start erasing to re either reveal or subtract rocks so that way I get whole chunks. I'm just speeding the uh, the time up now because all I'm doing now is just sort of fiddling around, making sure that I find all the edges for the rocks that I erase down to. And in some cases, some races, some uh, some rocks will be blended together, but you won't be able to tell that. They'll just look like whole rocks, as long as you're careful in in how you erase. Just make sure you got some shadows. Uh, around them and, and the edges are showing properly. It should come out okay. And that's really all there is to it. There is no quick and easy way to do this. That's why this is the right way to create a seamless tile. Oh, here... Um, if I erase too much here, we get a duplicate rock. Now, of course, it's going to tile anyway, but we don't want it to duplicate rocks to be that close together because then it becomes far too obvious and it looks weird. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to clone in uh, some rock here so that ed harsh edge uh, gets cloned away. You have to be smart about, about which rocks you clone. Again, you don't want any of your cloned areas to be too obvious. So you want to be able to be, you want to be selective in where you're cloning from and make sure it matches up with the rock you're cloning to. This goes for any type of texture, whatever you're working on. Now we got to be careful when we get to the edges. We don't want to mess up our tiling because right now it's perfectly tiled on the edges. 
So where there's the harsh the harsh edge in the middle, we get we get as close as you can, but don't go over it. If there's just a tiny little bit hint of it, don't worry about that. It's better to leave that than to go too far and mess up your tiling because that'll look even weirder. So this is just a matter of cloning and erasing. This is actually looking pretty good. Now we need to get rid of the ugly, nasty um, wire and uh, bent piece of metal in there after we get a little bit more cleaning up around the edges of the rocks. So we will clone, clone these out. It's just the easiest way to do it. The easiest and best. And that looks pretty good. This one, this this uh, bent piece of wire is, is actually probably one of the, uh, is a really easy thing to clone out. Uh, be careful where, again, be careful where you're cloning from. You don't want it to be a really obvious, like, stripe, like a cloned stripe. It'll look, it'll look really strange. So sort of pick and choose areas to clone instead of just cloning in one, one big chunk. You'll get better results. Just want to make sure cloning isn't too obvious. And I think that's actually looking pretty good. Just clean up the, around the edges. Fix a few little spots that were missed. Okay, now what we, need, what we need to do is we need to make a bump map. And we need to make all the lower, the areas where there's mud, which is lower down from the rocks. So we're going to flatten this and duplicate it. And then we'll undo because we want to keep all our layers separate. We want to be able to go back if we need to. So don't just flatten stuff as you go and leave it like that because you may need to go back and fix something so always keep layers keep things layered as much as possible because you all, all you never know if you need to go back and and fix something and if you've flattened things too much you may go oh geez okay so we could we can uh turn this black and white two ways we um we can use um a black and white under image we can uh we can use black and white or we can use desaturate now i'll show you desaturate first and it's not very good it's it's not enough contrast it, it's it's far far too flat looking so instead you get better results sometimes if you use black and white and in this case if we pull the yellows down the mud starts going darker which is what we want because those are low lower areas and um, you'll, you'll get better results and it, it just it brings it makes everything pop more and that's what we want because all the lighter areas will be higher and all the darker areas will be lower. And also be careful when you're when you're changing your contrast and stuff. You don't want the whites to blow out because if the whites blow out, it, they're going to flatten and it's going to look really weird. So just be really careful with all these little the white the, the lighter areas. So now we're painting in the dark. Now make sure that you paint on a separate layer. Do not, do not start painting directly onto, um, 
onto the rocks because again you want to be able to go back and and change things if you need to and there is no quick and easy again there's no quick and easy way to do this you just have to get in there and do it by hand that's just the way it is I can guarantee a good chunk of the time if you try to take a shortcut you're just going to um, waste a lot of time and it may not even work or it may result in some really terrible results. So we're just speeding this up because again, there's really not much to see. Um, you know, it's just me coloring in between the rocks. Now here you see this is a lower area that continues over onto the other side. This is where it tiles. Now, we bring in a guide so when we go over to the other side, we can line this, this, line this up. We're gonna get rid of this rock here because it could create like a weird spike. It's a very light rock and in a dark area, you just, instead of looking like a rock, it just looks like a weird spike sticking up and we don't want that. All right, so there we go. Put our guidelines in, and we get that lined up, and it should tile perfectly. Now, this isn't actually an ideal image to work with because it was taken with really harsh sunlight on it. So you got these rather harsh shadows coming off of some of the rocks. But it not but because of the nature of this image and the way we erased it, there's only really one rock in there that's problematic. But we're not going to worry about that because again, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm not going to use this in anything, at least that I'm aware of at this time. All right, now we're going to make the specularity map. So make sure you you flatten or merge those two layers. Uh, select all, copy, undo, and then paste. And what we're going to do is we want these lighter areas, because the rocks where they've rubbed together, they sort of get a little polish on them in spots. So what we're going to do to get our specularity map is we're just going to pump up the contrast really high. So just a few white speckles are left. So when we put this into Blender, those areas will have just a little hint of glossy shine on them. And we'll get much more realistic results than if we just had very flat rocks. Because if you look really closely at a rock, especially in sunlight, you'll see little glints of light because of it's especially in concrete which is made up of of a bunch of rocks in in like a you know in, in cement so wherever some rocks are banging together you're going to get you're going to get a polish on them so we want that to come out so that looks pretty good And I think that is actually it for for the specularity. So we want to save out um, all of our uh, maps. So we'll save out specularity as cobblespec.png. And so we'll just do that for each of them. Save them out. We'll save this one out as cobble bump dot png. Make sure we have the right folder. Thrill to saving files. The excitement, the chills. All right, uh, cobble diff. Now, uh, so depending on your 3D package, some call it the uh, this image, this type of image, either the color image or the diffused image. Blender calls it the diffuse, so that's what I'm going to call it. 
and let's go on over to GIMP. Okay, here we are in the GIMP. You may be wondering why I'm on Windows with the GIMP, and the reason why is, the short answer is, GIMP on Mac is doesn't get the same love and attention that the Windows and Linux version gets. And the slightly longer version is, is the normal map plugin is either broken or doesn't even exist depending on whether you're using the native or the X Windows version. So it's easier just to do this on Windows with a properly functioning plugin. So here we are, we have our bump map. I did some slight tweaks. Uh, I uh, brought up the contrast just a little bit and fixed a couple little things that I noticed uh, that needed fixed. But uh, the, the, the real point, what you're supposed to be taking from this is not for every little, little thing that I do. It's how you can do this yourself with um, other textures. Because each texture is going to be a little different and have different needs to get, you know, the, the right look. So let's take a look at to the normal map. So let's go to filter, map, normal map. And we want 3D preview so we can see things better. And let's put the light off to the side and switch over to sphere so we can see things better. Pump up the UV scale. Now it's very, very light. It's, there isn't enough there isn't enough there. So we're going to bring up the scale. And I said in the last video that I usually leave this at four. In this case, I'm gonna put it at eight. And hit okay. And there we have our normal map. And now we need to save it out. And we're gonna call this cobblenor.png. So we'll have four textures in all. We'll have the diffuse map, we'll have the specularity map, we'll have the bump map, and we'll have the normal map. And we're gonna need all four of those to uh, put together a nice uh, looking texture in Blender. Well, that's all for this show. Next time, we'll be taking all the textures we made, bring them into Blender, and make like a lumpy, cool surface for use on roads and walls or whatever lumpy surface you want to make. Uh, that's all. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.